Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Learn with Mukul. So in this video, I'm going to teach you about the basics of Cisco Packet Tracer, the transferring of data between two different networks in two different ways. The first way is our dynamic routing, and the second way is our static routing. So in my previous video, I've, I've teach you how to do use of router hub and switch. So in this video, I'm going to teach you about the basics of transferring of data between two different networks using dynamic routing and static routing. So firstly, I'm going to teach you about the dynamic writing process. I've already made a video on both the to topics separately. So don't get confused. I've made a comparison video today. So firstly, going to the dynamic routing part. Okay. Now, to as I've told you, to create a network, we need three components. First is a node. Node can be a laptop, desktop, PC, etc. And uh, one switch and router. So we will create here. So in dynamic routing, we need two networks. So there will be two PCs, two switch, and two routers. So we will do this. Control PC and two switches. The switches that I have told you to select here is 295024. Control and select. So that you don't need to keep on going and selecting the switch again and again. The router that I have told you. To select here is PT router. Control PT router. Now look, the components has been, has been established. Now we have to give the IP, V4 addresses, and the cabling part. Now first of all, go to this PC, desktop, IP configuration, IP4 address. Now give a particular unique name to this PC2, uh, which is an IP address. So I'm giving it as. 192.168.10.1 and press enter because it is a class C address because it is ranging from 192 to 223 so the subnet mask will be 3 times 255.0 press enter now I write a default gateway so that this whole network I am writing here this is my this is my network 1 and this is my network so you don't get confused this is my network 1 and this is my network 2 Go. Uh, now look the IP address you are going to provide here which is the default gateway will be unique because this default gateway will be the whole unique name of this whole network 1 so I am giving it a name as 192.168.10.10 remember when you are writing an IP address to a particular PC and a default gateway to the whole network, the first three numbers, look this, should be same as the IP address PCs and only the last digit will only change, okay? Now close this, remember the default gateway we have provided to the network 1, close this, now come back to this PC 3 of network 2, desktop IP configuration. Now give an IP for address. I am giving it as 192.168.20.1. Press enter. Now default gateway. I am providing a different default gateway because this is a whole different network. So I am giving it as 192.168.20.20 because the first three digits should be same to make uh, a PC part of that network. Now close this. Now. As we have given the IP addresses to both the pieces of different network, now we have to do the cabling part, which is the connection. Now select this copper straight through wire, control select. Now connect this PC to, to the switch. A switch has 24 Ethernet ports, so you can select any Ethernet port you want. Now go to this PC3, switch 3. Now switch route, router to switch. Remember to which Ethernet port you are connecting to a router, fast Ethernet 0 by 0. Similarly do with the different network of now as you can see here a bold red triangle symbol is being formed here, which means that the router of the network has not been yet started. So to start it, go to this router configuration and go to the fast Ethernet 0. Why we are going to this fast Ethernet 0 by 0? Because we have connected this switch to our Ethernet 0 by 0 port of that router. Now go to this fast Ethernet 0 by 0. 
port status on the IP for address you will write here the IP for address which is given to this whole network which was 192.168.10.10 press enter because it is a class C address do this similar step to the next network port status on IP for address now this network 2 has a different default gateway which was 192.168.20.20 press enter closes now remember when you are connecting two whole different networks you have to use a serial DCE cable remember serial DCE cable with this symbol okay now look remember now you will take here serial 2 by 0 port to connect to another router with a serial 2 O cable okay now close this now see here this cable is not yet started also so to enable it go to router 2 serial 2 0 now we have to give a particular unique IP address to this cable as well so port status on IP address so I am giving it as 10.0.0.1 press enter because it is a class A address which is ranging from 0 to 127 remember IP before address is 10.0.0.1 close this now go to router 3 serial 2 why we are going to serial 2 only because I have connected this router to this router using this serial 2 port only if there were more than two networks so there will be a different concept I have taught you in that previous video of dynamic routing so please do watch that port status on of this router 3 now give IPv4 address similar to that router 2 giving it as 10.0.0.2 press enter close this now we have given the IP addresses the cabling connection has already been done now go to, going to the dynamic routing process which is the most important of this video now click on this router configuration and you see here are two routing protocols which is static routing and RIP RIP here stands for routing information protocol so P is for dynamic routing and static is for static routing so click on RIP so what to do with this RIP I will teach you now look here you will be providing here the default gateway only the first three numbers now look here what I am talking about I have, took, I have clicked on this router 2 this is the configuration of the router 2 see this is the configuration of router 2 so you will write here the configuration the default gateway of this router 2 which is 192.168.10.0 I have told you only the first three digits now add now add the cable part which was only the common part which was 10.0.0.0 believe that I have wrote a 1 2 3 that, that was only for specification the first three digits were same ok now add this as well now add the default gateway of this network 2 as well which was 192.168.20.0 why I am writing here the last zero because it keeps on changing only the first three digits remain same so that's why giving a unique identification to both the networks now add this do these three steps similar to the router 3 of network 2 going to configuration RIP and doing similar steps 192.168.10.0 add this 10.0.0.0 add now 192.168.20.0 now add close this now how to transfer the data from one network to another network so click on this simulation show all none edit filters now click on this ICMP and DNS here ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol and DNS stands for Domain Name System. Close this. Now send the message. I want to send the message from this PC2 to PC3. You will see you will see here the status is in progress now. So play this. You will see here the message is being transferred automatically. This is how dynamic routing works here now 
it will send now it will go back to the same network one PC so this is how dynamic routing works in Cisco Packet Tracer now delete this scenario now taught you how to do dynamic routing now coming coming back to the static routing now the similar steps as done to dynamic routing we will follow that only a small change will come here instead of going to the RIP we will go to the static part now I will do this step similarly in a fast mode I am doing the similar step as done in the dynamic routing only the change that will come here instead of going to the, the RIP we will go to the static uh, do this this is PC4 desktop IP configuration give it as 192.168.30.1 press enter giving a default gateway 192.168.30.30 close this PC5 desktop IP configuration IP for address 192.168.40.1 press enter default gateway 192.168.40.40 close this now do the connection part control copper straight through PC4 fast ethernet 0 connect to the switch remember we are connecting a switch to the router with the fast ethernet 0 by 0 port if there are more than two networks you will do this concept with the fast ethernet 1 by 0 as well now after doing this to make the routers on but I am going to tell you this is my network 3 and this is my this is my network 4 this is my network 3 and this is my network 4 now to make this router on we will go to this configuration fast ethernet 0 by 0 port on now give this default IP for address the default gateway of this network 3 which I have given 192.168.30.30 press enter close this go to this router 5 configuration fast ethernet 0 by 0 on to the default gateway of network 4 which was 192.168.40.40 press enter close this now press control DC cable to connect two routers serial 2 to serial 2 of router 5 now to make this routing cable on we will go to the router because we have connected this router serial 2 port to the serial 2 port of this router 5 now go to this router 4 serial 2 make sure we are doing this in this router 4 only which is the network 3 port status on give the same IP for address I am giving it as 10.0.0.1 press enter close router 5 serial 2 if uh, there are more than two different networks we will use the different concept that I have taught you in my previous video static routing so please watch that 10.0.10.0.0.2 press enter now close this now go to this router 4 now remember now we are doing the static routing basically the only change that we have done in the dynamic and static is this only the routing in if we are going to this uh, RIP it is dynamic routing and if we are going to the static it is static routing the rest all the steps are similar ok now this is static routing so we will click on static now what to do in this static now look here remember this is router 4 of network 3 this router 4 the router 4 of network 3 now what we need to write here the network look this needs to router 4 needs to transfer the data to which network which is network 4 having a different default gate 
default gateway so you will write here the default gateway of this network 4 so I'm going to write here the default gateway of this to transfer the data to this router 5 to the static routing basically so what you need to do look here we have clicked on this router 4 which is the part of network 3 so you will write here the network the default gateway of that network which is which we need to transfer the data to so we need to transfer the data to this network 4 so you will so you will write the network default gateway of this of this network 4 which is 192.168.40.0 why i am writing here at last 0 because only the first 3 numbers comes in this routing protocols ok now the mask the mask is 255.255.255.0 because it is a class C address it's ranging from 192 to 23 because the first digits comes in the range of class C the hope the hope here is only single hope which is 10.0.0.0 add it see it has done the path the path has been established in the router 4 now do this similar step to this router 5 of network 4 static network you will write here look now we have come to the router 5 so you will in router 5 going to static in router 5 going to the static you will write here the network the default gateway of this network 3 because if I want to send the message from this PC 5 to PC 4 so this router 4 default gateway you have to known by the PC by the router of this network 4 so write the default gateway of this router 4 which is 192.168.30.0 the mask here is 255.255.255.0 and the hope here is similar hope which is 10.0.0.4 now add this we have done this now we have done the static routing so close this now we will do the simulation we have selected here only is DNS and ICMP DNS and ICMP which is ok now we will transfer the data you will see the message is being transferred now if it doesn't work in the first go delete this scenario and again go to the video and do this similar step it happens sometimes in this packet tracer application all the processes are right but sometimes it doesn't work so delete this scenario if there is a red wrong symbol comes here so go to go to again to the PDU and do the similar step which is going selecting PC4 PC5 and same message part so this is how we do static routing in Cisco packet tracer. So now I am going to run both the dynamic routing static routing PDU at the same time read this scenario selecting this P PDU transferring to this running both dynamic routing and static routing at the same time so playing you will see both the dynamic routing and static routing working the same you will see they will you will see they will go back to the <laughs> you can see now they will go back to the same PC from where it has come look the status is successful so this is how we do dynamic routing static routing in Cisco packet tracer I hope you like it if you did then please subscribe to my channel learn with me good and do comment to my videos what things that I need to improve and meet you next time thank you